The Ministry of Secondary Education has developed a distance learning platform for students of secondary education in Cameroon. A series of lessons taught by qualified teachers for secondary school students. Under the stewardship of Professor Pauline Nalovalyonga, in collaboration with the Ministry of Posts and Telecommunications, CAMTEL, CRTV and UNESCO. We are introducing distance learning as another teaching and learning method which is different from the traditional classroom setting that you are all used to. In the distance education mode, you are not with the teacher in person, so take your time, relax, listen to the teacher, take down notes and visit the following links for any questions or answers to your questions. Take it in your stride. This is Cameroon's solution to COVID-19 and beyond. Professor Nalova Lyunga, Minister of Secondary Education. Welcome to lesson 46 of your distance learning program for Geology from 4 with Neba Simplice Che. In order to move to our lesson 46, we begin with correction of assignment from uh, lesson 43. And uh, the assignment was to firstly list and describe three features produced by wind degradation and secondly list and describe three features produced by wind aggradation. So the key terms here that you have is wind degradation and wind aggradation. To understand this we know that Wind degradation stands for erosional features produced by wind, whereas wind aggradation means features produced by wind deposition. So we begin with one, the features produced by wind degradation, the first one, we have yardens. And yardens are long narrow ridges of hard rocks separated by furrows of softer rocks. Therefore, in this case, we have wind erosion that exploits the softer rocks faster than the harder ones, leaving the harder ones standing as ridges and the softer ones as furrows. What you have note here is that in Yardans, the hard and soft layers of rocks are arranged vertically. The next, we have rock pedestals. And rock pedestals are isolated mushroom-shaped rock masses with a rounded top and a narrow or standing base. They are formed as a result of differential weathering where rocks are arranged in layers of resistant and less resistant rocks horizontally. And now materials that are transported by saltation and surface rolling exploit or weather the bases of these rocks faster than the tops, leaving them standing as mushroom-shaped structures. The next structure we have zegens. Zegens are very much similar to yardens because they are equally long narrow ridges of hard rocks separated by furrows of soft rocks. But here what you have noticed is the fact that hard layers of rocks and soft layers of rocks are arranged horizontally. As you can see this is a hard layer and this a soft layer. So that is that for wind degradational features. We now go to wind aggradational features. We begin with loess. Loess are wind-blown fine soil, like composed mostly of silt and clay, that are deposited in layers over large areas. And this silt or this loess, they are very good for agriculture. The next we have sand dunes. Dunes are formed when or sand dunes are deposition of sand in the desert and we can have several types of dunes we can have star or complex dunes we can have parabolic dunes we can have uh, barchan dunes depending on the sizes and the shapes with a star dune for example they are formed when we have variable directions of wind for example this is an example of a star dune you can see that we have different wind directions and it forms now a star-like structure or star-like deposition of sand. 
we have parabolic or four genes which are stable genes formed along the coastline of oceans or large lakes. This one we have just one direction, meaning that the wind is blowing just for one direction, forming a parabolic shaped structure that gives us what we call parabolic or four genes. <laughs> To enter to our lesson 46, we are going to be looking at mass wasting. Remember, mass wasting is new. And under this mass wasting, we are going to start with mass wasting and types, classification and methods of prevention of mass wasting. And so our lesson 46 is titled Mass Wasting and Types of Mass Wasting. In order to apprehend or understand this lesson correctly, we have to follow this plan. We begin with lesson objectives, what you need to have at the end of this lesson, prerequisites, what you need as previous knowledge, real life situation, hypothesis, learning activities, recall, of course, application exercises, and we end with an assignment. To begin at the end of this lesson, you should be able to define mass wasting, list the causes of mass wasting, list and describe the types of mass wasting, outline consequences of mass wasting. So when we finish, you should be able to define mass wasting, you should be able to give us the causes of mass wasting, You'll be able to describe the types of mass wasting and of course list the consequences of mass wasting. For prerequisites, you need uh, previous knowledge in weathering and uh, agents and processes of erosion. Now, in 2019, there was a huge and rapid movement of soil down a hill that covered and killed so many people in Bafusam, west region of Cameroon. The question we are asking ourselves, or the scientific problem here is, what would have been the cause of such an event? What would really be the cause of such an event? Can it be steep slopes of hills? Can it be excess precipitation or rainfall? Can it be loose and weathered soils? This we are going to examine or see at the end of our lesson 46. For our learning activities, we are going to begin by definition of mass wasting. From there we go to causes of mass wasting and uh, we end up with types and uh, consequences of mass wasting. So, mass wasting can therefore be defined as the movement of large volume of materials downslope under the influence of gravity. Worthy of note is the fact that this movement can be sudden, it can be fast, it can be slow, or it can be imperceptible. So we can define mass wasting as the sudden, fast, slow, or imperceptible movement of materials downslope under the influence of gravity. What you have note is that you must tell us that it is movement of materials downslope under the influence of gravity. Observe the future below, or the picture below. You have soil moving down slope together with some materials, trees, and other debris. So from the picture, you can see a slope, and you can see materials moving down. And this is an example of mass wasting. So, the causes of mass wasting can be grouped into two. Those that 
come from the nature that we call them natural causes and of course those that are from human activities that we call them anthropogenic causes or causes from uh, human activities so we begin with uh, the natural causes of mass wasting the natural causes of mass wasting can be grouped into two we have predisposing causes and uh, we have triggering factors we begin with predisposing causes what you have noted here is the fact that these predisposing factors are the natural causes of uh, mass wasting but they cannot lead to and they cannot provoke the act of mass wasting they assist or facilitate mass wasting but they are not the provoking factors that is why we group we, we group them under predisposing factors and these predisposing factors we have plate tectonics slope gradient weathering rock lithology erosion let us see how these factors are going to cause mass wasting what plate tectonics will cause rocks to fracture producing joints increasing rate of weathering and rendering materials loose therefore the cohesion between materials will be reduced as a result of plate tectonics recall that plate tectonics is movement of plates that causes rocks to slide or move and this reduces the cohesion creates joints and these joints are further exploited by weathering activities rendering the soil and the material less stable loose and as a result it can easily move down slope we have slope gradients mass wastings are very common along very steep slopes since on very steep slopes the effect of gravity is very high next we look at rock lithology rocks with cracks fissures and joints can easily provide sliding planes for downslope movement and so we have especially rocks producing joints that are almost parallel to the surface and you see that these parallel joints will serve as what sliding planes for materials to move down slope equally loose rocks or rocks that are easily weathered will easily move down slope because these rocks will undergo weathering as a result of weathering the materials are disintegrated they are loosened up and so the cohesion is no longer there and there is a high tendency that the material will of course move down the slope we have weathering and erosion weathering and erosion will weaken materials weaken the bonds weaken the cohesion and render the material more susceptible to down slope movements agents of weathering equally like runoff and ice will facilitate this movement down slope especially when materials are deposited on ice you know when materials are deposited on ice if temperatures increases the ice will melt and these materials will be in between water and as a result they will be mixed up with water and move easily down slope now we go to the triggering factors these are the factors that cause that are that are i mean the immediate cause of mass movement what happens after or what happens that the mass movement or wasting occurs and the triggering factors are two in number we have precipitation or rainfall and of course we have earthquakes let us begin with precipitation heavy precipitation will wet the soil since the soil will infiltrate and keep water it will render the soil moist dense heavy and mobile 
because water will mix with the soil. As a result, cohesion will be loose. Sediments will, uh, 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 weathered materials will be more mobile, and of course, it will provoke downslope movement of materials. Next, we have earthquakes. Recall that earthquakes are sudden vibrations of the earth that are caused when there is movement of rocks along fault planes. And when there is this vibration, it destabilizes or disrupts soil cohesion on slopes, making them unstable, and as a result, they move downslope. And so, rainfall and earthquakes are therefore the triggering factors of mass wasting. Whereas slope gradient, uh, volcanicity are grouped under predisposing factors or causes of mass wasting. We now go to anthropogenic or human causes. Anthropogenic causes, we can group them under deforestation, farming, excavation for construction, addition of load on slopes. So we have de deforestation, we have farming, we have excavation for construction, and uh, addition of load on slopes. Let us begin with deforestation. Recall that deforestation is the cutting down of trees, or massive cutting down of trees. One thing to note is that when we have trees on slopes, the roots of these trees helps to hold the soil together, preventing the soil from moving down slope. And when these trees are cut off, the roots become weak and they no longer hold soil. And as a result, soil becomes loose, less coherent, mobile, and of course, move down slope. Next, we have farming. Multiple action of tilling the soil, digging, raking, reduces soil cohesion. And as a result, it causes the soil to be loose, unstable, and moves easily down slope. We have excavation for construction, especially during road constructions, where we have to dig and excavate very steep slopes. This increases the probability for materials to move down slope. For example, you can observe the picture below. You have a road that, is being con that has been constructed. And because this road was being constructed, this slope here was excavated. It was undercut down. And as a result, the steepness of the slope increased and uh, these materials here can easily move down slope under the influence of gravity. This equally happens when we want to construct our houses on steep slopes. We have to dig to level the foundation. And uh, as a result, when we are digging, we are excavating and cutting or undercutting the slope, rendering the area more susceptible to mass wasting. The last under anthropogenic causes is addition of load on slope. Addition of load such as construction of houses on steep slopes will render the slopes or soils heavier and of course facilitate movement down slope under the influence of gravity. For example, on the pictures, we can have houses that are constructed on very steep slopes. And as a result, these houses render the soils more heavier, or render the soils heavier, and easily move down slope. So those were the causes of mass wasting. That is, we had predisposing causes, triggering causes, and of course, anthropogenic causes. Now, let us look at the types of mass wasting. Depending on the type of movement, we can have the following types of mass wasting. Fall, topple, 
slide or flow. A fall is a vertical fall or a free fall of materials under the influence of gravity. For example, on the picture, you have a rock falling from a cliff. Worthy of note is the fact that falls are very common on very steep slopes or vertical slopes and they are sudden movement. The rocks are always fragmented or fractured or having joints along which the rock can crack or easily move or easily detach itself from the block and fall. The next we have topple. Topple equally are common on very steep slopes. They are very much similar to fall, but here the rock moves down slope under a series of bounces, not just free falling from a vertical slope. And so we can differentiate fall from topple in that. In a fall, there is free falling of the rock from a vertical slope, while in a topple, there is bounces, bouncing of rock on a steep slope. The next, we have slide. It is the movement of soil as a single mass down slope along a sliding plane or a slippery zone. Recall that in our lesson, we said in areas where joints are parallel to the surface, those joints now can serve as sliding planes for materials to move down slope. And it is the case of slide where the material moves as a single mass sliding along a plane or a slippery surface. Slides are mostly common in areas where we have two different types of rocks. Less resistant rocks at the surface and resistant rocks at the bottom. These less resistant rocks are easily weathered and the more resistant rocks serve now as a sliding plane for the less resistant material to slide. The next we have flows. These are movement of materials down slope as a viscous liquid. So here, soils, rock debris are mixed up with water in such a way that they move along a channel. As you can see on the diagram, they move along a channel as a flow or as a stream. But now the material is a viscous liquid. And so we have several types of flows. For example, we can have soil creep, earth flow, mud flow, debris flow, and debris avalanche. Let us begin with soil creep. Soil creep is a very slow and sometimes imperceptible. When we say imperceptible, we mean sometimes it is unnoticeable. It is very slow and sometimes imperceptible downslope movement of soils, which means that the rate of movement here is very slow and usually it is less than one centimeter per year. Therefore, it is very difficult to detect soil creep. But we can detect soil creep by using or by uh, 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 observing tilted fences and tree trunks, inclined poles, offsets in roots. Next, we have earth flow. Earth flow is the movement of fairly dry soil downslope as a viscous fluid. One thing to note is that earth flow can be slow or rapid and generally appears with a narrow tongue like, with a narrow tongue like shape having a rounded and bulging front. Mud flow it is a flowing mixture of soil and water usually in a channel looking like a stream mixed with mud and so mud flow is very much similar to earth flow we have debris flow this one is similar to mud flow but the material moves down slope in a mixture of soil and rock fragments and regolith what you have not equally is the fact that debris flow is faster than mud flow and uh, lastly, we have debris avalanche, which is very rapid and turbulent movement of debris, air, and water downslope. 
It is the fastest variety of debris flow and it is very, very catastrophic. Sometimes in volcanic environments, volcanic ash and cinder that has been piled after a volcanic eruption, if there is heavy precipitation, it can lead to this type of debris avalanche and in that case we call them lahars. Consequences of mass wasting. The first one we have loss of property and asset which can bring down the economy like infrastructures, houses, destruction of, uh, of uh, buildings, that is properties. We can have loss of life, just like the case in our problem situation. We can have destruction of buildings and farmlands. It can lead to flooding and contamination of surface water. Recall that contamination of surface water is secondary, which means that after mass wasting, where materials are mixed up with surface water, this can, in the long run, lead to contamination of surface water. It can equally destroy the beauty of the landscape. Now, recall that mass wasting or downslope movement or mass movement is the movement of large volume of materials downslope influenced by gravity. The causes of mass wasting can be natural or anthropogenic. In the case where they are natural, we have predisposing factors, which are the factors that assist or that facilitate mass movement and the triggering factors, which are the immediate causes of mass wasting. The types of mass wasting, based on the type of movement, we can have fall, topple, slide and flow and of course the consequences of mass wasting include loss of property asset and of course loss of life with this we are going to handle some application exercises in order to see if the lesson was well apprehended exercise number one we go back to our problem situation what could be the cause of movement of materials down slope? Remember, this is our problem. This was our scientific problem. What could be the cause of movement of materials down slope? We give proportions. One, steep slopes. Two, heavy rainfall. And of course, three, loose and weathered soils. So after through the le going through the lesson, we are going to identify what are the possible causes of movement of materials down slope? Is it that we have steep slopes? Is it that we have heavy rainfall? Or we have loose and weather soils? So A gives us one and two only. B says one and three only. C says all of them, one, two, and three. And D says only two. And so through the lesson, we know that our correct answer is C steep slopes, heavy rainfall, and loose and weathered soil can cause materials to move down slope. Exercise number two. What are the triggering factors of mass wasting? What are the triggering factors of mass wasting? A. We talk of rainfall and erosion. B. Earthquake and rainfall. C. Rainfall and steep slope. D, erosion and weather. What you have noticed is that all of these propositions, all of these answers will cause mass wasting. But now the triggering factors will only be B, earthquake and rainfall. Exercise number three. Match the table below. Type of movement, characteristics. On the type of movement, we have A, fall. B, topple, C, flow. And on our characteristics, we have one, bounces down slope, two, viscous ma material, and three, vertical slope. And so we can conveniently match fall to vertical slope because it's the free falling of rocks and the slopes are supposed to be vertical. We can match topple to series of bounces down slope 
and of course we can match flow to viscous liquid which means that our number one is b our number two is c and our number three is a and conveniently we can say that our answer for that question is b exercise number four which is the fastest type of debris flow a debris avalanche b earth flow c mud flow d rockfall remember that rockfall is already eliminated because it's not a flow and the correct answer is a debris avalanche exercise number five match the table below type of flow characteristics we can conveniently match uh, so uh, mud flow to channel of mud and water we can match soil creep to tilted poles and of course we can match debris flow to soil rock and regolith and our correct answer will be a exercise number six vertical slopes with fractured rocks will favor what type of mass wasting a rock fall b rock avalanche c rock slide and D, rock topple. And the correct answer is A, rock fall. With this, you will, carry, you will do the following assignments. Define mass wasting. List two natural and two anthropogenic causes of mass wasting. Name and describe three main types of mass wasting. Give any three consequences of mass wasting. To further understand the lesson, you can read on the following references. With this, we have come to an end of our lesson 46, and our next lesson shall be on classification and methods of prevention of mass wasting want. <laughs> Una tege majang matege ndom mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen ngani bana matege mot ngani la kiri watege ndom esetina bia dinki do mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen tam tama mote tam zabike tam tama tonge tam zabike tam tam tama mote tam zabike mane tambia ninya ne njobya yen